Hello, students. It is I, Mr. Steinecker from the past, and I'm here to teach you a new topic today. So, really quick, in review of last time, I hope you guys all remembered the lovely rhyme that we practiced about paired commas. Extra information needs extra punctuation. Important information does not get separation. If you remember that, you probably did well on our quiz. All right, we're going to move on to today's topic. And today we're actually not talking about punctuation marks. How weird, right? Today we'll be covering the fourth of our eight different ACT English topics. So after today, we're halfway done. Make sure you have your notes materials ready. And here we go. So today we are going to be comparing our learning topic to what you can see on the screen right now. These are scenes from various different shows, movies, and games. You might recognize up in the top left we have Doctor Who. Bottom left is, that's right, Harry Potter. On the right side we have Marty McFly from Back to the Future. We've got Link from Zelda. And in the middle is not Dragon Ball Z, like you might have thought, but actually a character from a video game called Chrono Trigger. All of these series involve time travel in different ways. And it might be really great in stories, you know, it makes for a fun mechanic, but time travel and changing timelines in our actual writing would be quite confusing. If I say, yesterday I went to the store and I bought some cheese and then I buy some milk. What? Why, why did I say bought and bought and buy? You know, that doesn't sound quite right. Okay. Today's topic also has to do with patterns. Take a look at the pictures on the screen and you will notice that architecture tends to revolve around repeating shapes or ideas. Right on the left with some windows, on the right with some tiles on the floor. It just so happens that as human beings we like things to match. It provides a certain sense of aesthetic pleasure that we enjoy. And so not only do we actually use patterns with our visual design, but we also use patterns when we're speaking. Something we don't pick up on as much when we are speaking out loud, but it's definitely something that we pick up on more when we are writing and reading others' writing. Also, we have a picture here that relates to this topic too. Uh, this little pig thinks he's a dog, and that might be cute most of the time, but it's probably pretty awkward when it's time for dinner, and all the dogs run through the dog door, and the pig doesn't fit. And he thinks, wait a minute, why don't I fit? I thought I was a dog, just like the rest of them, right? Um, similarly, take a look at this picture. We have a bunch of people dressed up for job interviews. Imagine you showed up for a job interview dressed as the guy in the middle. What do you think your boss, or well, your potential boss, is going to think about you after the interview? It doesn't matter if you've been to Harvard, if you have like the best grades and work experience of anybody around, he's probably going to be so distracted and just keep thinking, uh, that person was dressed up like a mime. Why was that person dressed up like a mime? What the heck? You know, you dress so differently from everybody else that he can't even pay attention to the message you're trying to get across. He's just paying attention to your presentation. And that's not something we want to do in our writing. We want our ideas to come across. We don't want to be distracting with the, the style or presentation of our words. Okay. So with all those examples out of the way, the actual skill that we're covering today is called parallel structure. So in your notes, make a nice big uh, column four or title section four or you know however you're organizing them. Four is parallel structure, also called parallelism. And this is a skill that many of you have probably already covered in English class, even if you don't remember the name. So as you can see with the big red bullet point, the, the way this skill works is we are trying to match underlined words in the ACT with similar words in the passage. So as it says in yellow, what we're doing is we're basically noticing patterns in our language and we're choosing the same kinds of words or the same endings of words to match that pattern. The comic shows a dog saying woof, woofs, woofing, and woofed. Those are some examples of patterns that we use in English. There's actually a word for when we do it with verbs, with our action words. And if you have ever studied another language, you probably already know the term conjugation. Right? Like in Spanish, I can say yo hablo for I speak, but if you speak, I don't say hablo, I say hablas. Right? You have to change the word depending on who's doing it or depending on the time it's happening, past, present, future, etc. We do the same thing in English, 
Uh, we don't have as many forms of words in English as in other languages. For once, English is actually simpler. But it still holds true that we want to generally make the patterns match. So whatever you wrote down on that, I hope the most important skill that you, you figured out from there, the most important idea, is we're making things match. Whether that's verbs to match or that's descriptions to match, we want things to match. Sometimes it doesn't sound bad when things don't match, but the ACT is going to say make the best edit, right? Pick the best option. And so if you have a choice between some phrasing that doesn't quite match in a list or a description or a story, and you have phrasing that does match, the one that matches is always better. We call that parallelism, you know, like parallel lines go the same direction in math. Parallelism means they're going the same, the words, the words are going the same direction. You know what I mean, the words sound similar, okay? So here's an example of that, because you're probably like, Mr. Steinecker, you're, you're talking so much, just like show me an example so I can get it. You're not even here to point at the screen like you usually do. So look at this on the screen. Imagine you are a boss. Imagine, well, you are a boss, but imagine like in the future, you're a boss. Okay, that was a stupid joke, sorry. Anyway, um, you're a boss and you're looking at the resume of an employee and you're trying to decide if you want to hire them. And in his skills section, he says, I am good at following instructions, working quickly, and to have a good attitude. Some of you hear that and you're like, yeah, okay. And some of you hear that and your sixth sense kicks in, kind of like the kid in the slide I showed earlier who said, I see patterns everywhere. You look at it and you realize there's something wrong with that. So if we actually highlight the three verbs in this little skills section, you will see following, working, and to have. One of those things is not like the other. Which one is it? Yeah, it's to have, right? That does not match up, okay? It has a different form of the verb than the other two. So the question, of course, is what can we do to make it match? The, we can pause the video for just a sec, and I want you to decide. Decide and then like say it out loud. Okay, did you pause? I'm just a video, I don't know, okay? Uh, the answer is having, right? Instead of saying following, working, and to have, we can say I'm good at following instructions, working quickly, and having a good attitude. Those match up more closely than the original, so it's better as far as the ACT writers are concerned and most educated English speakers are concerned. We like things to match. We like things to sound kind of rounded and balanced. ING is what we call a continuous verb. It's a verb that can happen in the past, present, or future. I was walking, I am walking, I will be walking, and that's different from when we say this like the normal base, you know, like vanilla version of the word. In other words, like if I just say to follow, to work, to have. In other languages, they call that the infinitive. You might recognize that if you've been studying like Spanish or German or something, okay? English has infinitives too. And we don't mix infinitives with the ing version of the words when we're doing a list or anything like that. Okay, here's another example. This one you get to figure out on your own. Here we are gonna think about parallel adjectives, right? Parallel descriptions. We want our descriptions to sound balanced and parallel. So up here on the board we have a sentence. I think our dog is ugly, smelly, and makes a lot of noise. I wish we had a different dog. So ask yourself, what kind of descriptions are we dealing with in this sentence? Makes a lot of noise is option A. Option B says makes noise a lot. Option C, noisy. Option D, a very loud one. Take about 36 seconds and decide which one is the correct option? Or let me rephrase that. Which one is the best option, right? Which one matches the most closely? Go ahead and pause the video and take about 30 seconds. Decide on your answer. I'm assuming we paused the video. Once again, I am a video, so I don't know. Um, but on the count of three, assuming you did decide on your answer, I want you to say what the answer is. Let's pretend like we do it when we're in class, okay? One, two, three. Oh, people said something. I have no idea if you said the right answer or not because I'm not there. But the right answer would be boop, 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 noisy, okay? Uh, that matches up more closely with the words ugly and smelly. Not just because it is one word, okay? But actually take a look at what we've got here. Ugly is an adjective, 
right? It's a describing word. Smelly is an adjective. But the original phrase on the board makes a lot of noise. That's not an adjective. That's an action, right? It's a verb. Makes, right? So that's why A and B are kind of awful as far as this skill is concerned. It makes sense, but it doesn't match up very closely. Instead of having adjective, adjective, noun, if we have adjective, 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 it's completely parallel, right? So we're doing a list. C is the best option, ugly, smelly, and noisy. And that would be true even if it wasn't a word that ended with Y. Like we could say ugly, smelly, and dumb. Ugly, smelly, and fat, right? The point is it's an adjective to match up with the other adjectives. Okay, last but not least, we have one more example. This one, um, I'm going to assume that the sub, if you're watching this video with the sub, is going to hopefully kind of follow along. So we have a phrase here, a paragraph here from the Harry Potter books, and we have two different uh, underlined sections here. In this particular case, what we're going to do as far as making things parallel is making sure that everything is happening within the same tense, T-E-N-S-E, -E, okay? Verb tense basically just means the time the verb is happening. And in fact, in Spanish, that's what they even call it, is el tiempo del verbo, okay? So in English, we do the same thing, right? We don't tell a story in the past tense and then suddenly time travel to the future. We, d we don't say, I went to the store and I got some cheese and I will get some bananas there also yesterday. What? No. We don't do that, right? If you, st if you start a story in the past, you stay in the past. If you start a story in the present, like the way the Hunger Games books do, like Katniss says, I, I wake up, I look outside, I see PETA. If you, if, it's kind of weird to do that in my opinion, but if you do start a story in the present tense, you got to keep it in the present tense, okay? So as a British version of Mr. Steinecker reads through this example, I want you to pay attention to the verbs, which if the video doesn't pause, we could maybe even have the sub underlined with one of those smart board markers. Um, but yeah, pay, pay attention to what time all these verbs are happening, and then ask yourself if the underlined portions match. Come on in, British Mr. Steinecker. Don't mind if I do, with my beautiful, totally realistic British accent. Okay, so here we go. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big beefy man with hardly any neck, although he does have a very large moustache. Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences spying on the neighbours. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion there was no finer boy anywhere. All right, we'll advance to the next slide. We have the same prompt here, but now you can see your options, right? Go ahead and take about a minute, and I want you to decide which two options would make the most parallel of a choice. Okay, we have some verbs like was, made, he was a van, Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde, she had twice the usual amount of neck, okay? Ask yourself, what time are all those verbs happening? And now I'm, I'm starting to get ahead of myself. So yeah, take, take about 30, 60 seconds, decide on your answers, we can pause the video again, then we'll come back together and see if you got them right. And ignore the fact that the letters are mixed up. I made that mistake at one point and now I just think it's funny so I'm keeping it that way. All right, we're done, I'm assuming, yeah? We magically all decided on our answers? Well, let's see, okay? So was, made, was, had, came, all those verbs are happening in what time, my friends? In the past, right? So in that case, we want to make sure that our underlined verbs are also happening in the past. So for option five, A does have, that is in the present, right? Does is like happening right now. Like I did something yesterday, I will do it tomorrow, but he does do this thing now, right? So that's not, that's not parallel because that's we'd be time traveling. Don't time travel. Seriously, if you didn't already write that down in your notes, write it down in that simple rule. Don't time travel. It's an easy way to remember a lot of the parallel structure stuff, okay? So, um, anyway, going back to number five, we have two options that are in the past. Both G and H are in the past. Only, 
Wait, no, sorry, that's wrong. G is in the present. Look, even in a video, I can make mistakes, okay? <laughs> so for number five, the only one that actually is in the past tense and would work is option H, as in hippopotamus. If you thought five was H, congratulations. You done got it right.